Hi, this is Greg Benz. I'm excited to announce the availability of Lumenzia version 1.7. Uh, this is the seventh free update to Lumenzia and the biggest one yet. Uh, in this new version, we have uh, first this completely separate panel, Lumenzia Basics. Uh, it is a standalone panel that you can install separately or not if you choose. Um, but essentially, it's a collection of helper functions that you would commonly use with luminosity masking. Things that don't really belong in the main panel because it would create a lot of clutter, but things that you, know, you may not be aware of all the options or maybe just like having a button for everything or maybe you don't know the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so I put all these new functions into the Lumenzia Basics panel. And I'm not gonna go through them here. Just wanna make you aware that I have a completely separate video that goes through that in greater depth. So please be sure to check that out. But back in the main panel here, Lumenzia version 1.7, we have made some changes in the overall layout here. Essentially, all the buttons are now grouped into uh, in areas where you would create a preview of a mask or selection, the options to then apply that mask or selection to uh, various different layers, and then lastly, options to further refine and tweak the image. So it just creates kind of a, a nice workflow and, and some order to the, the panel here. So uh, rather than just kind of pick on, picking off each of the new functions here, I'm gonna create a, a quick demo to kind of walk through them and show you what's possible. So I'm gonna start that with the pre-blend option. And previously in pre-blend, you would have multiple files open and combine them into one. With the new version, you can still do that, but if you have just a single document, you can create exposure variants of it. It's a really nice way to extract more detail from a raw image. In this case, I've got clouds that were moving uh, and other challenges that you know, I may, just, may prefer to just take the, the original raw and blend these together. Or maybe I just had one image um, whatever the case may be, um, I want to create some lighter exposures for the building here. So I'm just going to tick off the exposures I want. So I can do anything from a minus three to a plus three. I just want a plus one exposure. I'm going to hit OK. Lemenzi is going to turn these into camera raw smart objects and stack them into a group. If you had a whole bunch of these, you may want to kind of hide things in a group. That's an option. But essentially, we've got our original base exposure and then on top, the plus one exposure, which has been masked out by default. If we just hide it for a second, we can see this is the plus one exposure. So we're gonna take these darker areas and blend in the lighter areas from this plus one exposure. And because it's a camera raw smart object, we can double click this and we can still further refine this. So all the original raw data is in there. Uh, lots and lots of flexibility. It's a completely non-destructive way to blend different variants of this. Um, just make sure that you open up the image as a smart object in Photoshop to be able to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be um, starting with a pixel that's already lost a little bit of the, uh, the raw data. Um, so now that we've used pre-blend to get ready to start blending things, we need to create a selection of the dark areas in order to blend them. And the way that I typically do that is to work with a darks mask or dark midtone that is. And I clicked on zone B here and you can see that we've got a pretty good selection of the building, not as great with the sky. So I want to customize this preview before I apply it. We've always had that option in Lumenzia, um, but there's a twist in that we now have a new levels layer here. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, but just to kind of walk you through how these work, if you're familiar with customizing in Lumenzia, you don't have to take any of these presets as they are. You can modify all of them before you apply them. And the way that these work is the first thing is Lumenzia is going to create a black and white version of your image because masks are just black and white. So um, we have this quick conversion here, but we don't have to use the default. We can go in, so click on the adjustment here, click into the image, and by dragging, be more or less selective of various tones. So. I've already created a little bit more separation between the blue sky and the rest of the image. On uh, the next uh, portion here, we have the actual curve. So this is gonna map this black and white uh, over to my mid-tone selection. So, um, all right, so I was playing with a black with this off, so it's probably better that we uh, go back to our blues and there we go, that's much better. Um, so we have this curve that's basically gonna take the output of the black and white mixer and map it to tonal values. And what you can think about this is, here is the, the tones coming out of the black and white mixer layer from black to white. And on the y-axis is essentially how selected are they. So if I take any of these curve points, I can make things more or less selected. 
So for example, if I grab this here, which are kind of these, you know, dark mid-tones kind of near the center, I can change the feathering in my masks. So I can completely change these values. I could even grab a target adjustment. I can see that I'm right in this part of the curve. So if I bring this up, I can be more selective in those dark areas. Just very, very flexible way to take individual parts of this curve, just slide them up or down to make them more or less selected until the mask looks the way you want. And you can move on to the next step, which is a global adjustment. So the curves adjustment lets you you know, be more or less selective of specific tones. The levels adjustment is here to let you adjust the overall finished result. And this is um, something that, um, well, let's show another example. If we were working with like a dark mid-tone here, uh, nothing is fully selected. And you can see in the histogram that nothing is fully selected. With the levels, I don't have to go into the curve and adjust all the individual curve points that are created there. I can just take this levels adjustment and bring this in and so now I've got a fully selected mask. So I, I had this and now I have this. So it's going to be a much better selection um, in that regard. So I'm going to step back a couple states here. And all right, so here's what we were uh, working with a minute ago with this adjusted zone B where we got rid of some of the sky selection by tweaking both the curve and the blue value. I don't know that I really need to play with the levels here, but I um, may want to just try and see a little bit if that's going to help me with some of these mid-tone values. And the thing I'm looking at here is actually where these clouds touch the building. And if I can just leave enough separation, that's gonna make it nice and simple to have a good separation between the two areas of the image. So at this point, um, I like what we've got here and I'm gonna apply it to our exposure. So I select this layer and hit mask. And it's gonna take the preview and apply it as a mask. So we have exactly this custom curve we were working with a second ago applied on this plus one exposure. And we can see that the overall result is that it's lightening up the dark areas of the image. And it's, you know, the, the tones are, are much better, but the result is a, a bit muddy. And that's because, you know, this mask as it stands is not really optimized for this. I'm kind of doing this as a demo, but uh, essentially all these interior areas that are blacked out or grayed, we're getting kind of muddy. We really just need a luminosity mask at the transition areas here to kind of smooth things out. So let's say we wanted to further adjust this well we can uh, we can do that i'm going to click on the split function so now we can see both the uh, mask and the resulting image and if i grab a paintbrush uh, by hitting b and with white paint uh, you'll see whenever i make a paintbrush on the left and let go it refined on the right so if we want to adjust this here i'm going to paint here on the mask and it's being refined so i can see in real time, all the adjustments I'm making on the mask, what they're doing to the image with the, uh, the split function. What's kind of new in version 1.7 here is this restore function, and I can use this at any time, but if I click on it, Lumenti is gonna remember the current state of the image. So it's remembering the pixel values in the mask, or if I had some other uh, pixel layer here that wasn't a smart object, it would remember all that. And I can come back to this point at any time in the future and I'll come back to that in a little bit, but just remember that we use this as the point where we um, set our reference for the mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to refine this mask. Um, just try and you know bring back more of the detail I want. Uh, I'm gonna switch over in a second to black paint by hitting the X key, clean up these cloud areas here a little bit and a little bit up top here. And already things are starting to look quite a bit uh, better. This is a, a pretty good looking image. Uh, you can see these lights here could probably stand to be cleaned up as well. And you see it really pops there quite a bit more when I when I let that through. So, you know, if I started to do some pretty tricky areas here to refine this, uh, and I'm not advocating this approach on this image is the best way to do it. I might use the quick select instead if it worked on this image. But um, if I'm doing these detailed refinements here, I might start making some mistakes accidentally. So let's say, and I'm just gonna exaggerate here, let's say I'd accidentally painted a little bit out here and maybe I was trying to undo it and I you know, blacked in some areas here. You know, and I, I just don't have, um, you know, the, I've, I've just destroyed my mask. Now I could go back in history, if I can remember where it was and just step back to undo things, but maybe I've done 10 more things since, and I don't want to undo everything, just these particular changes. 
So let's go ahead and keep working for a little bit. We'll come back and fix these in a minute. I just want to show how you can work in a sort of a nonlinear fashion. So I'm going to clean up some of these areas with a little bit of white paint down here, get a little bit more of this building. So now we've made a few more adjustments to this mask um, since we uh, first made our mistakes. And now we want to fix these. We'll just go click on the restore function and it's going to let me either start painting back to where I was or if I want to say that this is now the reference point, I could update it and this would become um, you know, the reference point that I could restore to in the future. But I'm just going to hit undo here and this is loaded up a brush for me where I can immediately start to paint back these masks. Now it's going to paint back to where we started. So if I start painting down here, I'm getting this original mask. I'm going to undo that. Uh, it's just going to go back to whatever state I had. So it's not that it's going to give me exactly what I want. It's going to just let me undo back to my restoration point. So that's a case where you may want to update your restoration point as you work. Once you get to a certain place where you feel like you've got some pretty safe changes, you can, you can fix that. But you can see it gives us a really clean way to fix that mask, which is not only helpful to undo any accidental changes, which can be very time consuming if you make a mistake, um, but it also lets you work a little bit more quickly. I don't have to worry about painting inside the lines when it's so easy to undo. So I just really enjoy the flexibility that this gives me in my workflow now. Um, so at this point, I think we've got a pretty good mask. Obviously I can keep going to really kind of perfect this. That's not the point of this tutorial. I just want to show you what's new here. And so um, next up, we want to look at some of our edges. And so let's just close this so we're looking at the image and I'm going to zoom in here a bit and when we look at the image here it's not bad I mean there's actually not a lot of obvious edging here um, but if we look at the original these trees are a little bit more crisp and I want to maintain that in this image well the way in which you can do that is with the refine edge tool in Photoshop and new in Lumenzia is this refine edge option which will actually give you some preset options. Uh, in this case, I've got kind of a more complex scenario. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to load up Refine Edge with recommended set points. And you can tweak these as much as you want, or you can accept them as they are. Um, but I'm just simply going to show here kind of the before and after for a second. So here is our original, and then here is the adjustment. So. I'm going to call attention really to these trees here. Watch these here. So this is where we started. And then after Refine Mask, this is what we're going to have. So it really cleaned things up. I didn't, I didn't have to change any of these settings. Lomenzi just provided them for me. But again, you could change them if you want. Um, but that's really kind of cleaned up those areas. That's a really helpful tool if you have any sort of fringing when you're trying to cut a person out of the background or you're trying to blend multiple exposures, you see fringing at the edges of a building, which is pretty common. Okay, so I cut myself off there. I got a little bit long-winded, but just to recap everything, uh, Lumenzi version 1.7, we now have the new basics panel, lots of additional functionality there. Please make sure you see that video. Uh, we have new options for creating custom luminosity masks by using these levels adjustments uh, within the preview. And then when we want to refine the images, we have the ability to refine edges in a very uh, simple way with recommended settings. Uh, we have the ability to restore any pixel level changes we made. So if we paint on a mask, we can quickly and easily undo things. And then the pre-blend now has the ability to work with a single exposure, which is great if you've got a raw image that you really want to extract a lot more detail, quickly stack up the exposures you want and begin to work with it. So I hope you enjoy uh, the new version and uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks.